So you have likely already learned about the notion of the slope of a line. And what we define that is, is the change in y over the change in x as we go from any one point on the line to another point on the line. And some of you, when you first saw this, might be wondering, hey, will that come up with the same slope no matter what two points I pick? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's start off with this line on the left. And let's make ourselves feel good that no matter which two points on this line we pick, if we calculate the slope correctly, we will always get the same value. Or that for a line, the slope is always going to be the same. So let's start with these two points that they have given us. And so we can think going from this point to that point, we could think about what our change in x is going to be. I'll do that in purple. That feels like a good color for change in x. So our change in x over here, that's supposed to be, looks like an a, that's a delta, a triangle right over, delta x, our change in x over here, we're going from x equals negative eight to x equals four. So it takes us eight to get to the y-axis and then four more, our change in x is 12. What is our change in y? Well, let's go from where our y started, which is negative four, and let's go all the way up over here. And so, and our y is now going to be five. So our change in y is equal to, it takes us four to get to the x-axis and five more, our change in y is nine. So if we only used these two points and we wanted to calculate the slope, our change in y over change in x would be nine over 12, nine over 12. So it looks like, at least just using those two points, the slope of this line is equal to nine over 12. But let's see if that's true if we pick some other points on this line. So let's say I were to pick, and I'm gonna pick some points where I can clearly see the coordinates. So let's say that point right over there, and that the coordinates there, let's see, x is negative four, and then y is negative one there. And then let me pick another point that clearly seems to be on the line. So let's see this one right over here. This is the point x equals zero and y is equal to two. So let's look at the slope between these two points. And to do that, I can construct another triangle here where I can say my change in x is that right over there and that's one, two, three, four. So my change in x is equal to four. And then what's my change in y? My change in y I'm going three up. My change in y is equal to three. So what's my slope over here? It's change in y over change in x, or three over four. So I am getting a different number here, but notice, these are equivalent. Three over four is the same as nine over 12. Those are equivalent fractions. So the slope is the same for these two that I picked. Now you might say, hey Sal, maybe you just got lucky. You just picked points that happened to work out. But now let's think a little bit more generally. Look at these triangles, these 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 purple and purple tri these purple and red triangles that I've drawn over here. Some of you might be familiar with the notion of similar triangles. Because the base of these is parallel to the x-axis and then our height is parallel to the y-axis, we know that these are right triangles because the the x and y axes are also perpendicular to each other, so these are both right triangles. And I won't go into all of the details here, but we also know that the corresponding angles are going to be the same. And if you don't know what that is just now, don't worry about it, but these are similar triangles. And in fact, any triangle that you draw between any two points on this line in a similar way are going to be similar. So that's similar to that and to that. And so similar triangles, the ratio of the height to the base in this situation is always going to be the same. You're always gonna get the 3 fourths or the 9 twelfths in this case. Now what about a scenario where we're dealing with a negative slope? Well, let's figure that out as well. So let's, and we could draw multiple triangles here. We have to, we have to think about what's happening with directions here. Here we only deal with positive values, but obviously the direction that we're moving in matters a lot. So let's say as we go from this point to this point, what's going on? So we could do change in x first. So our change in x, we're going from x equals negative five to x equals negative two. 
So our change in x is equal to positive 3. But then when our change in x is positive 3, what is our change in y? Well, our y is actually going down in this scenario. It's going down by how many? It's going from y equals 9 to y is equal to 3. It's going down by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So change in y is equal to negative 6. So if we wanted to know our slope, our change in y over our change in x, this is going to be equal to negative 6, change in y, over our change in x, over 3, which is equal to negative 2. Let's see if that's true someplace else. And I encourage you, you can pause this video and you could try this anywhere you want on this line. Just make sure you get your signs right. Let's try it. I'm going to find some other point where it clearly intersects. Let's go between this point and let's go between and that point where we clearly are intersecting the grid, so to speak. So here, our change in x, change in x, we're going 2 in the positive x direction is 2. And then our change in y, we are going down again. Our change in y, change in y is equal to negative 4. Well, what is negative 4 over 2? Well, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 again. You can do this anywhere you want. You're just going to keep generating these similar triangles. And similar triangles, the ratio of this purple side, or the ratio of the red side to the purple side, I should say, which is really what change in, x, change in y over change in x is really what we're talking about. If we take direction, this negative sign, into account, this is going to be the same no matter where we go on this line. And so the slope on this line, no matter which two points we use, is always going to be the same. The slope of a line, by definition, it is going to be constant.